Hi. Windows update? Folks, let me tell you, we're having some uh, audio issues and basically it's every time you do a Windows update, they decide to just, I don't know if they rename, actually, I, I don't think they're renaming your audio settings. I think they are changing the audio ID, which I'm behind the scenes is, is how programs are identifying it. I, so basically you have to go back and check them all over again. It's, so. uh, and it wasn't all three this time. It was just my microphone at reset. So screw you, that's Crazy. staying in the intro. I'm gonna just open it straight on Ian. Um, folks, welcome to Local Chat. None of this made <laughs> sense. The music didn't even sound good, I bet. Um, we're here for episode 37. I was gonna make a joke because I started the show by saying welcome back to episode 37, but you never went anywhere. It's the beginning. You're, you're not coming back to it. We just started. Kyle, uh quickly filling out the games he's played this week uh yes. i just saw it tearing I was very across busy today I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no that's fine i was also very busy today um folks we got a lot to talk about this week joining me is uh of course kyle uh whom i mentioned already he's there and also ian gibson straight from jacksonville florida getting settled Whew. um i found out it? it's it's great uh, turns out having a house is great because you can just put as many holes in the wall as you want. I, I hung a TV and like I did the proper thing, which was I like put in a full like cable hiding kit and I like tied into an outlet and I made my own outlet and all this stuff. And it looks fantastic. And like it's like I bought like that little hanging system to hang your brooms up. And I was just like, whoop, 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 just putting holes in the wall, hanging it up. It's great. Not great. There's two different snakes apparently living in our backyard um you think they're both non-venomous but they give me the heebie-jeebies and i don't <laughs> like going outside anymore but it's still great living in florida that's my weekly florida update i'm not <sighs> gonna visit you anymore now <laughs> <laughs> they're non-venomous because um snakes i mean there are other states that do this as well but in florida you get pretty used to quickly if you spot a snake you go to this website that's all about like Florida snake ID. And it's just like, it literally has a filter where it's just like, what color was it? Was it striped? Was it a uniform color? Was it like a, a squiggly pattern? Was and you, just like narrow it. <laughs> you narrow it down to the type of snake. So we looked up both of them and both of them are non-venomous, but that makes them zero less creepy to me. I like this. This is not a joke. I'm not going to do this, but literally. So one of them I saw while I, while I was mowing. And it's it's only like 12 inches long. Like it looks like a long worm, but it's a snake. You can immediately tell because it's lifting its head. It's doing snake stuff. And I was just like, <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stay away snake from you. Stuff. And then the other night we had a pile of brush in our backyard because we've been pruning all these overgrown brushes and stuff. And um, we were picking it up and Maggie picked up a section of it and she screamed and I got mad at her because she's, she screams at everything. Like if she's in the kitchen and I walk around the corner, she screams. And I was like, why are you screaming? And she's like, there was a snake. And I was like, what? And she goes, there's like a th four foot snake that just went in the bush. And I was like, are you serious? And I was like, are you lying to me right now? And she goes, no, there's like a four foot snake. And I was like, I don't want to go anywhere anymore. I can't walk in this yard. And I just stood there for like 10 minutes being like, where do I go? Where do I go? And anyways, we looked them up oh. and they're both non-venomous. We're pretty sure that we I, were able to identify them it's terrifying i guess i've just but uh i i was literally standing there and then i was just like i have to buy a gun i didn't want to but now i've got to buy a gun so i can shoot snakes and then i was like no my backyard's so tiny i'm gonna I, like you have to buy a shotgun for snakes and i would just have pellets ricocheting into all of my <laughs> neighbor's houses and i'm like i can't no that's that's a stupid use can of the gun but there was a large part of me that was just like i have to kill this snake i don't want this fucking snake on my property it's completely non-venomous it ran away from us but i can't handle it man i can't handle can it can you so. can you just shoot a gun on your property um, are you allowed to do that it depends on the jurisdiction um but it also you have to do it even if you are allowed to do it you have to do it safely so yeah. you need like a backstop like you're typically shooting into a berm um there's it, it really depends because there's like sound ordinances etc like where my parents lived in 
semi-rural Maryland, you could, but it had to be safely done. Gotcha. So it, it really depends locally. That sounds terrifying. I um I don't like snakes either, so glad I don't live near Ugh. any of them. Um yeah, yeah, I told Maggie I've only got three major fears in my life snakes, heights, and uh social situations. So uh, <laughs> I was like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna. Anyways, I, I think it's kind of good for me because we I'm not gonna get rid of the house now. I like it too much, so I guess I'm just gonna get used to them. Um, just to tie it off, I had a thought while I was driving home today. I think if I give them a name, I think it'll make it easier for me. To kill you know them? I mean? <laughs> no, I'm going to enjoy that regardless. <laughs> I was going to ask no, why I just you didn't just like, hit it with the lawnmower. I was thinking like Barry the Black Snake, because one of them is is a black racer. That's his name. It's like a solid, glossy black snake. And I was just thinking if I just call him Barry, it makes it so much, makes it a little bit easier in my head to be like, I wonder if Barry's out here. Don't scare me, Barry. Instead of being like, where's the snake? I thought you said, I don't know. I might be Barry. Crazy. Like, I'm going to bury that black snake. And I was oh, like, what? No. <laughs> like, that no. went from zero to a hundred really fast. I'm at like 150 right now because snakes, man, I don't deal with them. I was thinking, That's my what, if, what if you're on the top of the Empire State building at a lovely soiree full of your ex-girlfriends and they're all holding snakes? God. Just be the the worst thing ever. I, um, there'd be, I'd jump off. Yeah. Be <laughs> like two people there. I don't know. Um, folks, uh, we've got a lot to talk about this week, apparently. Um lots of news but before we get to the news we got to talk about what we have been playing and there are i'm gonna save the looping one for the end because i figure we can talk about that a little bit in depth um i'm gonna briefly touch on i've been playing a bunch of rim world uh with the two expansions that's been a lot of fun um, the new ones yeah, so I the the new expansion is ideology, which adds like religion and stuff like that. And then I also mm. bought the royalty one because I hadn't owned it before, and that came out a couple of years ago. So I'm I have like twice as much content added to the game now. Nice. Um, and then I so I'm basically doing this whole uh, colony to kind of get used to all the systems, and then I'm gonna start adding mods back in because there's some crucial mods that I just really like uh, that just make playing that game either easier or there's like wall lights that make things a lot easier um and all that so i'm just playing through that when i'm bored um yesterday warioware get it together came out two days ago sorry came out uh mm -hmm. i played it yesterday it is a single player or co-op warioware game i've been playing it with karen and it is an absolute blast i am having an incredible time um, Warrior Wear is great. Yeah. Just great. I, is this the first time they're doing co-op? I think so. Sure. Um, but it plays really How's well. Um, How does that co-op work? Is it like you're you're co-oping the same game or is it like back and forth, back and forth? So uh, it's like the single player. The brief story is um, Wario is about to put out his new game at his company and the game sucks all the designers in. And so they're going level mm -hmm. to level and clearing all the bugs. And gotcha. um, as you go to each level, you unlock, you grab an, a new character. And so you're unlocking like a roster of characters to use. <laughs> God bless you. Thanks. And um, so each of you chooses as you get further in the levels, you have more characters to choose from. So you choose what characters you want to bring into the, the level mm. with yourselves. And then it is 15 mini games in a, or micro games in a row uh, that you 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 both go into and solve it as fast as you can to try to pass it gotcha. and then there's a boss at the end uh it, it's fun the levels are fun the micro games usually you can get them on the first try uh if not you can get them on the later try uh they're like they're more familiar because you'll remember the phrases and stuff uh my highlight though is one of the levels was nintendo themed and so mm. all the micro games were nintendo games so one of them was Super Mario Land that you had to go and jump and hit the block. Another one was from the most recent Fire Emblem and you had to it said compliment. So you had to go to the text choice that was complimenting <laughs> the person at T. And then one was Breath of the Wild. You had to hit uh, the metal box as fast enough because it was in stasis. So it would launch the farthest. Mm -hmm. um, it was really cool. There were a bunch of different ones. Um, 
the other's the Donkey Kong one. There's a uh, SNES Super Metroid one. Uh, there's so many games, and it's really fun. I'm hoping there's two modes that we haven't unlocked in the main menu, and I'm hoping one of them is like a party mode, because I've seen the party WarioWare uh, GameCube game, and I think that would be fun to like bring it to a party and have everyone playing micro games. Yeah. Uh, I. S assume in that mode they would make everyone wario because I, I didn't mention this but each of the characters you're unlocking plays a specific way so like wario jetpacks and hits to the side uh dr krygor flies around um there's mm -hmm. a character who is always skateboarding and just shoots up uh so there's like all these different so you have to kind of choose what you think will be best for the mini games uh as you go and they also have an auto choose that picks uh the best for the all like the series of mini games you're about to do so but we've really unlocked or like found our favorite characters um and there's one character 18 volt that we refuse to touch because we didn't like him at all uh, <laughs> so it's fun uh it's definitely uh, a great co-op game and usually we get like when i play a co-op game with someone i turn off my carefree nature and i'm just like we have to get we have to get this done there was no laughing and like i feel like karen and i both kind of do that in co-op games me way more than she does yeah. and this game hasn't been any of that every time we like lose it's like oh let's just start over like because they're fun to do the micro games and yeah. uh like because they're so fast that it doesn't matter when you mess up because you're just going again so that's been a real blast um ian you want to talk about Hi. one of the games you have been playing yeah, I've been playing Death of the Loop. Uh, I hate you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I played, Um, I had a little bit of time. I, you know, busy, 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 busy. Busy, busy, and busy. I had about 90 minutes this past weekend to kind of just sit down and after talking with David last week, play the first 90 minutes to two hours of Psychonauts 1. Um, I, I've tried playing this game before, I think maybe 10 years ago, and I bounced off of it. I, I don't think I was anything about the game. It was just my state at the time where I, I guess I wasn't into that type of game. Maryland. Um, no, actually this was in college. Um, I think, I don't know. Anyways, I digress. Let's not digress. That's not a good digression. <laughs> don't let me do that. Oh, talk your ear off. Anyways, um, Psychonauts. I was, I know this is a good game, but I was surprised at how good the writing is like right away. Cause this game came out in like 2004, or 2005 or something like that. Maybe even earlier than that. Like this is an old game, but right away they, they are establishing a story and they're establishing unique characters. And the dialogue is very snappy. Like it, like in terms of cutscenes and story and everything, it does not feel aged at all. Like it's just fantastic writing. Um, and the levels are still pretty interesting and good. The controls are a little wonky. That's kind of where I was bouncing my head off the game. And um, I, I'm not sure I'm going to play any more of it, but I was definitely enjoying what I did play. And honestly, hearing that Psychonauts 2 is more of the same, if even better, and modernized has made me excited to play Psychonauts 2. So I, I would say if you're at all curious about Psychonauts 1, absolutely pick it up. Um, as you know, I'm somebody, I bounce off games pretty quickly, and I also can't really tolerate old games. Um, I don't really like going backwards that much in terms of backwards into old game design, old control schemes, etc. And Psychonauts has very minimal problems like that. So it's it's definitely one of those where if you think you're going to enjoy it, just go ahead and pick it up. Just pick it up, play it. It's on Game Pass. Have some fun with it. Nice. Um, Kyle, what have you been playing? Well, yesterday was my first foray into Monster Hunter's entire sort of universe. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, the the oeuvre. Uh, it was... They need to work on their tutorial because I felt like the tutorial went on for like three hours. Yeah, And that's yeah. basically for how long I streamed. And it was like every single five minutes. It was like, hey, this is a thing now. And you're just bombarded <laughs> with tutorial screen after tutorial screen. And I'm like, oh my God, stop telling me stuff. Let me get used to the stuff you just told me. Um, yeah. And it's sort of this weird combination of them shoving a ton of stuff in your face and having you do basically the same thing over and over and over again with slightly like, here's like the same mission you basically just did with a slightly different objective. So that was yeah. sort of like 
kind of disheartening while I was playing it. I was having fun because I think the combat is definitely fun and there's definitely a really, really high skill ceiling for a lot of the different weapons. Um, but oh my gosh, it's just as as a brand new player who's never played it before, I just wish that they had like like a 15 minute, here's the basics of everything you need to know. And if you want to go in deeper, you have that option. But oh my gosh, yeah. it was just like, it was like the worst yeah. aspects of JRPGs that I just I, I don't I don't care about them. Yeah. Um, and this um this is not to to refute your point, but uh, Monster Hunter World was also my first, mm. and it's just it's crazy to think about how people say the onboarding and the tutorials in Monster Hunter World are the best by far in the entire series. So I, yeah, I cannot yeah. even imagine trying to pick it up that game before Monster Hunter World. Yeah, it's how much um, worse it would have been. It's it's a lot, and you can definitely tell that they. I think like they're trying to pare down stuff, but mm -hmm. it just, it as a brand new player to it. And I, my friend Al was on stream with me and he was sort of explaining everything. And I was kind of getting annoyed, not with him, but with the fact that like he had to explain something that already had an explanation that I was just trying to get used to the last explanation that I was still learning about. And I was like, yep. it was just this overwhelming amount of information, which I'm sure some people can pick up right away, but that's just not how I function as a gamer. I'm more, I'm more like, like show don't tell kind of, which I think a lot of gamers yeah. tend to be, especially like modern games are, are better at that. Um, but man, it was just, it was rough. But then towards the end, I was like, okay, I'm, I get this gameplay loop. I definitely understand what the process is. I like the fact that you're, the, the monsters can interact with the, I didn't know anything about the game. So I was like, oh, the monsters will like fight each other while mm -hmm. you're yeah. there. And like, we, we were fighting this one monster, this huge T-Rex came up out of nowhere. And I was like, what do we do? <laughs> like, what are, what are we doing? Um, so it was it was cool in that aspect. And I can definitely tell the, the longer I'm with it, obviously the tutorial stuff will will even out and, and there won't be as much. But, oh man, this, this first like two and a half hours are just rough. But uh, yeah, so I played that yesterday, looking forward to streaming it more and hopefully not being bombarded with text pop-ups. And yeah, I also played about an hour of Skatebird, which, hey, we just released a documentary on. It's true. Um, yep. Jake Perio edited. Awesome. Go watch it. It's great. Uh, and the game is fun. It is extremely casual. It very, you know, n there, there's there's nothing about it that I think doesn't sort of scream, relax, have fun, go at your own pace. Um, the camera's a little wonky sometimes, but so far I, I saw I was reading through some of the Steam reviews and that seemed to be a big point of contention for a lot of people. I don't think it's like that wonky it's like a little wonky sometimes but for the most part um i've been having fun you know i i got about an hour into it you sort of get the the gameplay loop which like go over to a bird press lb they'll tell you to do a series of things and it changes the world slightly and then you can expand your your maps so i'm Ooh. i'm having fun with it it's a nice little nice little indie game so props to everyone yeah. at uh at the studio that made it Subpixelfilms.com so yeah. if you want to check out the documentary, subpixelfilms.com. Yes. Do or it. if for some reason you don't want to type in a dot com, you can go to YouTube and type in subpixel and it'll be right there. Um, but other than that, uh, I played a little bit of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I thought I was <laughs> I, I technically finished it on stream. I got to the part where it's like, oh, hey, you you rescue or you 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 deal with your sibling if you if you're if you play as a guy or a girl. Um, and I thought that that was like the end. And then I realized like, oh, wait, there's this whole Atlantis thing. I completely forgot. Oh, about. I've heard about that. I've heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's yeah. like uh, P Pythagoras, I think, or or I can't remember yeah. what his guy. name is. Yeah. He's like, he's like your dad. What? <laughs> yeah. It's like this, it's like this big reveal, but then he's like, hey, here's a whole other quest line for you to do that. You have to go and find all these, uh, uh, puzzles or riddles or something. You have to go to all these different places. And I like, I, I did that part. And immediately after you get out of that cinematic, I was like, well, I'm not doing that right now. And completely forgot about <laughs> it. And I was like, I'm just going to focus on like the, the human aspect of it. And I went after it. I I'm playing as Alexia. So I, I went after my sister. Um, and like, I saved her, which if you save her instead, of, I don't know if you can kill her. Um, but it it did not like connect emotionally with me. It was just oh. like very, it, it just like everything happened too fast. Like they needed they needed 
to punch up some of the writing and to extend out some stuff because it was like she's totally evil and she's gonna kill your mother and you and then like five minutes later you're like all hugging on a cliffside and yeah. i was like no this is not this is not yeah. what's going on but yeah played a little bit of that but otherwise uh that's that's pretty much it i i'm interested in death loop i do kind of want to play it but um i've heard it's really buggy on pc so i think i'm gonna wait a it little is. bit a little bit a little so. bit yeah. yeah, I've had some stuttering issues. Like, mm. like I, I'm on a 1080. I thought it may be my graphics card, but basically, like, uh, there's some random points. It's, I've played about an hour. It happened five or six times so far where the game will just freeze for a second and then pop back in. And I, I just, looked it up, and, pe and people with like 3,000 series graphics cards are having the exact same issue. I just noticed on Steam, actually, if you go to the recommended like hardware specs, they recommend a 2060. I don't think that's you need like, that. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I was confused by because Arcane games, like they're not that graphically like intensive. I was like, no. what does someone need a 20? Like I have a 2070 Super and I was like, yeah. I'm I'm not even thinking about the, the graphical fidelity of this game. I'm thinking more about just, um, you know, how how well maintained it is for PC already. So I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, because I, I, I was worried about that as well, but I, I've got a 1080, I've got an older i7 and I'm playing at 1440p medium 60 fps sure. so except for the stutters it's great and apparently some of the stutters people believe are due to de novo which Wouldn't i put in their games and as you know with the novo hackers will remove the de novo and the game suddenly runs better so drm <laughs> turns out may make the game stutter but anyways death loop before we dive into this so i like i said i've played probably an hour i've basically touched the first two areas and that's it um once each um if that makes any sense to you will where where are you how far have you played how long? uh i don't know time is a concept uh i am i if i had to say i'd probably put in two hours maybe three i have killed i finished the tutorial uh okay. you get an achievement after that and then i have or a trophy uh, I'm on PS5. It's running perfectly smooth and great, and it looks fantastic. Uh, I have uh, beaten two visionaries. Um, one of them. So, uh, you. Uh, without spoiling anything, the visionaries are just the like gameplay trailer. The bosses around but, the map. But, but wait, wait. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. I thought it was in within a single day loop you have to beat all of them or is it just you beat one and then you're good for the rest of the game no no, no, no. You, you you have to beat them all in one loop to beat the game okay but i have so, taken them I just down got for the first you... time okay okay so you you figured out two of them enough to kill them yeah, and it was both the first loop. try right. it wasn't gotcha uh, and a loop is so, is four sections of a day for people who don't know uh when you're yeah. done with it, it's it's morning noon afternoon and night and then the day resets from night to the previous morning after that. And uh, I, because I haven't quite finished this, the whole tutorial section, but it's it's kind of set up like Persona, right? Where basically it's like, it's morning. Where do you, where of these four areas do you want to go in the morning? And then, yeah. and then once you leave that location, now it's, now it's midday. Where do you want to go? And yeah, I, okay, okay. And I've already done a thing. So I'm in an afternoon of my first official day and I found something and I already like, oh, if I come here in the morning, I can do something to prevent this thing. Like I've already figured yeah. that sort of thing out. So, um, but anyways to say, uh, so I just happened upon one visionary in the first, so they have like missions that you can follow. So I found a visionary in the morning, took them down. And then I moved on to the afternoon, found a visionary and took them down. The main reason I wanted to take these guys, you want to take them down, is you end up taking their power that they have. So the first mm. visionary I took had the power that connects people together. So when you throw it on the ground, it's almost like a grenade, and it connects. You see these, uh, like, shiny lines between all the people affected, and whatever you do to one person happens to everybody. So I'll throw it down at a group, and they'll all get connected, and I'll shoot one in the head, and they all fall to the ground. Um, yeah and then the second person i went and got was the blink ability from dishonored um and the reason you want to go get those is when your day is over you can spend your souls residuum i believe it's called and 
uh, trinkets and stuff, and you can uh, infuse things that carry over the loop. So when you wake okay. up the next morning, you can keep a weapon, you can keep a shard, which is the power, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah. long story short, let's, um, as far as impressions... Let's, 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 let's zoom out a little bit. So Deathloop is basically a run-based game. Like we said, there are four locations on an island. There are six visionaries spread out across that island. You have four time slots in the day where you get to pick which location you want to go to. And you're trying to kill all six of them in the day. There are certain mechanics, skills, items, etc. that will carry over from uh, from parts of the day to other parts of the day and then other things that will carry over from loop to loop. And at the same time, there is somebody else who could potentially be played by another player who is invading your world trying to kill you. I think that's a pretty good overview. And I right? just want to say, as far as the locations, uh, every location is different in each time slot. So it's more like 16... 16 locations yeah. or four locations but 16 different uh versions of the island uh and locations gotcha. um yeah you said you're gonna say your overall impressions so yeah far. so overall impressions i am really digging it uh i i like the dishonored i've only ever played dishonored one i like dishonored um i have trouble with stealth games when uh i feel like playing stealth games sometimes don't give you enough uh otherworldly talents to be good at stealth so like yeah. metal gear solid 5 you can tag enemies um or like it's in third person so you can look around a corner so death loop has a lot of those things like tagging enemies and you can peek and all that sort of stuff um hitman obviously has like the sensory thing which you don't have here but the nice thing is um when you get into a brawl or a fight you can pretty easily run away and hide and the, the people will forget about you, um, which they explain by saying, hey, we just have to kill Cole event Colt eventually. Uh, he'll be here every day, so don't don't expend yourself chasing him down. He'll come to you, which I think is, is a cool way of explaining why guards forget about you. Uh, and then um, the other nice thing is when you get into combat and you're killing people, it's not an endless bunch of people coming it is the people who heard the gunshots are running over and once you eliminate them you're pretty much golden in that area uh people can wander i sort of noticed that i haven't seen it enough to like mm. actually uh definitively say people walk around the entire map uh but uh overall impressions i'm really enjoying the game it's beautiful the story is super intriguing to me uh i just yeah. want to see where it goes uh and i'm having a great time the the character quips um are very it's done in a style like i hesitate to say it's the mcu marvel style it's like that style but done well in in a modern way you know it's more like it's more like modern it, it heavily nods to black exploitation films yeah um, yeah yeah the 70s. but they're doing and, that sort of like self-aware character copy. stuff exactly um, yeah so I, I like I said, I'm probably I probably played about an hour of it. Uh, it sounds like I'm about halfway through the, the like the long tutorial segment. Um, I, I want to like this game and I'm definitely going to keep playing it. But there's some stuff that's pushing me off at the front. And I think part of it is like you were talking about stealth and I did the first area stealth. And I most of this is me where I'm doing the stealth and I get too anxious while I'm doing the stealth. And that becomes that takes the enjoyment out of it for me. So then the second area, I was like, all right, I'm just going to go guns blazing in a way. Like, if I need to go somewhere and there's somebody in the way, bam, I'm dead. I'm just shooting them. And it was very easy. Like, like I had this one shot gun where I was just like, boom, dead, boom, dead, boom, dead. And just, so I don't know. I hope the combat gets a lot more interesting and a lot better because for right now, it's just like, I thought guns blazing would be a bit more of a challenge than stealth, but it turns out it's actually a lot easier than stealth because you're literally just killing people left and right. Um, and then the other thing is, it's it's funny you brought up tutorials, Kyle, with Monster Hunter World, because Deathloop, um, unlike a lot of loop-based or run-based games, they are giving you a lot of tutorials, and they're giving you a lot of different things to carry over within the loop and also loop-to-loop. -loop. Um, but it's it's a lot of, like, you're playing the game, and it's just, like, you click a button, and it's like, here's a new menu, and then this, like, three-paragraph text explanation pops up. I mean, it's yeah, it was, probably not three paragraphs, but it's a big chunk of text. I, I was kind of interested because you said you were you thought you were only a little bit over the way through the tutorial after playing for an hour. And I was expecting yeah. like 
15 minutes it, like 20 minutes it's 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 more of a yeah it's more of an intro it's like, a, like they're running you through several loops to get you to the point yeah where you it's like a guided loop. you would be doing oh, okay. it yourself yeah, okay. um, but it's still it's still a lot of like it's a lot of like explanation oh, you you open a menu and it's like boom here's a big explanation prompt and then you're like okay well let me and it's like click this button you click the button and it goes boom another big explanation yeah. prompt so it's a lot of like there's not much gameplay at the beginning because it just feels like it just feels like they're throwing a lot at you and i think i've been thinking about tutorials a lot lately and this is kind of brought it to my forefront of my mind as well it's just like i appreciate all the new mechanics they're bringing to the run based genre but they are not doing a great job of explaining them because it just feels like they are shoving them all at you at once. When I really think it, I, I really prefer the Zelda method where it's like, Hey, you're going to do this quest and you're going to get this item. Here's how to use the item. Okay. Now in order to finish this quest or to get back to this next area, you're going to have to learn to use the item this way and this way. And finally this way. Okay. Now you have the item and you know how to use it the four different ways continue playing the game with this at your disposal. Whereas this is just like, hey, by the way, you can do this. Oh, you can also do this. Oh, you also can do this. Oh, here's what's yeah. going on. Here's what's going on. And it's all just these text pop-ups. And it's just like, it's it's a little yeah. bit overwhelming at first. So I really, I'm really i excited to play the game more, but man, it's, it's I, onboarding's a little not great. I want every game to be that lady who's Twitch streamed Breath of the Wild and she was 40 hours in and discovered the tutorial shrines. Like, I want <laughs> that. Yeah. For every game. Like, let me... Let me do what I want to do, but also show me where the help is if I need it. Yeah. 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 And I do, I think there is definitely something to be said for that sort of, it feels more natural. Like Breath of the Wild is a really good example because exactly like you said, it's, it's sort of iterative, continuous use of a new thing. Um, yeah. And you just do that over and over, but it doesn't feel repetitive because once you've, once you've cleared out the, Hey, this is how I can use this in the game world they don't remind you about it again. Like it right. doesn't come back. And, and it, there's very rarely anything in that game that like branches off of something else you knew that, that they specifically tell you about. Like there, you, I learned more from that game, watching other people play and use the physics in a way that Nintendo doesn't explain at all. Like they yeah. don't tell you, they're just like, figure it out yourself. We'll get you to a point and then you can go and, and, yeah. learn and, and experiment on your own that's sort of what i prefer and i get that that doesn't work for every game like some games you do need to be a lot more consistent with how you present data or not data um new new types of uh weapon usages and and gameplay loops and stuff um but there does come a point and specifically with monster hunter where it's just so overwhelming so i think that yeah you can you can tow that line, but you have to be aware of, hey, new players who may have never played a game this like this type before, we have to be aware that we're not uh, overextending our reach with with explanations to everything and just making them tired. But I actually, interestingly, I watched um, G4 is like back. They're like a thing on YouTube now. Um, and Adam Sessler did like a 15 to 16 minute sort of midway through his playthrough of the game kind of review preview. And oh, he quick look. Yeah, quick look. Um, and he talked he talked a lot about yeah, quick look. Um, he talked a lot about how the game got better the more magical abilities that you got. And he said okay. before before you get that, it is kind of a slog. Um, so I, I think that's interesting where it's like if you feel if you feel maybe it's not as engaging as it should be, or if you are just really tired of the stealthy missions, maybe really try and go after the visionaries is that what they're called yeah 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 and and try and get some of those powers and he said it really sort of steps like that's what makes the game great is when those powers are introduced so yeah because i've been like once i got the especially the um uh sync one it's like when i so i was pretty much doing stealth but then i i would do actually i was doing more of a half and half so when you would alert enemies they would all bunch up and come at you so that's when you throw that down and you just shoot the mm -hmm. one guy and it kills everyone and then the other blink i got it's just like i can get out of situations faster now or i can get Perfect. over to someone faster so they definitely uh really improved the game this is this is just completely it does not have to do necessarily with death loop itself but is it at all related to Dishonored? Like, are there it's callbacks same, and stuff? Oh, oh. It's, um, it's, it's the same universe? Yet. Like, same world? I don't think it's the same universe. I, 
that might be something that's revealed but as far as i can tell there are arcade machines in one section that refer to both uh dishonored one wall. and two okay. and uh uh doom um uh -huh. but uh so far i don't believe i i haven't found any connection to it that could be a thing okay. but uh, as far okay. as i know um sweet so uh oh the one thing i want to say i'm also still playing hades um i played a bunch over the weekend uh i still haven't beaten the third boss uh it's really annoying and i can't beat him anyways uh moving on to the news folks time for the news which means i gotta play the news theme here we go We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What is up, news? Folks, uh, there's a lot of news this week. I tried to organize this list uh, quickly before we started, but I don't know if it really, really is organized very well. I just kind of wanted to start with the delays of the season. Uh, we all know Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West 2 was delayed to february that happened a couple weeks ago uh earlier this week dying light or dying light 2 posted on the twitter saying they were delaying the game uh to february 4th 2022 uh i believe does anyone it's february for uh forbidden west does anyone know what day the 18th sounds right for some reason yeah that sounds right, right. Ian's Which means Breath of the Wild. Insane. Breath of the Wild comes out a week later. Yeah, Breath of the Wild comes out a week later. Um, yeah. My favorite thing was Jeff Grubb tweet saying, please, please stop. Or he said, please put a game in February. Nothing's coming out in February. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so Dying Light put out a thing. And then just right. the other day, it's actually, it was yesterday, Battlefield 2042 put out a delay. Only a month, though, not all the way to February. Uh, they've delayed from October, I believe, 19th to, oh no, October 22nd to November 19th, a little under a month. Uh, they didn't, don't believe they said why. Did they just say polishing? Just felt like polishing. Uh, yeah. I think, I, I think the, uh, the rumors pointed at they got a lot of feedback from the, uh, the closed beta that kind of made them rethink some mechanics, so they've had to shuffle a bit because of that. You don't think anything would change with wasn't my Michael K. Williams one of the characters in Battlefield 2042? Yeah, his because um, he, he was in a previous Battlefield game and he's reprising it. So possibly, I, but I don't. I, yeah. I don't think. Sure that, I don't think that would be, rip it out. Yeah, I don't think that would be the main reason. Like, and I don't they think they would take him out. But, I think they yeah. would add like a maybe like Plus his voice lines were recorded or in memory of six or months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But I wasn't sure if it, it, it had anything. But th that makes sense. Feedback from uh, from betas and such. Um, so that was the delay Still news. excited to play that, though. Yeah, pretty me too. Excited. And it's not as close. It's a closer to Halo now, but it still gives me a month. So I actually... Other than 2042. It's going to happen. I actually have a question. And I know it's already been delayed a lot. But do you think Halo might be pushed to 2022? I, don't I mean, so. they announced a date, and, and they're yeah. already delaying. They already delayed campaign co-op. They're already mm -hmm. delaying Forge. So they're they're at the part where they are delaying parts of it rather than the whole. Okay, game. it's just because a lot of these bigger games are getting delayed, and I feel like there's a chance that three four three might be like, well, if Battlefield twenty forty two is getting delayed, and Dying Light is getting delayed, and anything else, it's like maybe we can. Because I know, I think one of their developers. It, potentially one of the developers on one of the leaks and rumors sort of subreddits posted supposedly um that the campaign was you know going to be ready by by the date that they announced but that some of the developers were still really like pulling for another pushback but that they said microsoft brass was like no like we can't delay again um yeah so i don't know i i I hope it's not delayed, and and I don't think it will be, but I think there's a slight chance that maybe it will, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I don't think I would be surprised if it came out, and I also don't think I would be surprised if they delayed. Do you just lose um, Ian? No, but his, I'm still here. Uh, oh, okay. Your video is just is having the fun times. <laughs> I'm loving it. Um, right. Yeah, it's, it's there's no issue with your audio, so you're good. 
moving on, uh, earlier in the week, there was a gaming leak from uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA? NVIDIA? GeForce. N- NVIDIA. NVIDIA. Where the fuck have you ever heard of NVIDIA? I don't know. So- I feel what like you're that getting that confused from? with Namibia. I feel like <laughs> Nvidia is the way I pronounced it as a child. Stop when I, it. When it I hurts saw my ears. It, like when I saw it, like that's how I pronounce it when I like appeared. And then when people said it, or when it, I actually heard it, and then it's like hard to correct. So, anyways, Nvidia. Gita. Oh, what? God. What do you want? What do you want from me? Do you eat a lot of paint chips as a kid? No, a I've question. never eaten. What is a paint chip? Like, they don't. They don't even make those anymore. They don't like the lead-based paint that would peel off. You peel it off the walls and eat it. Yeah. So apparently you ate a lot. Of, anyways, and uh, Nvidia uh, put out. Uh, <laughs> no, someone hacked Nvidia. I can't say the word anymore. Anyways, there was a bunch of information leaked. It had a ton of stupid things on it, like games for their uh stupid geforce thing geforce now um and it had a bunch of games on it all these games that don't exist currently on the pc uh highlights including bioshock 2022 and stalker android and monster hunter 6 uh and this was on like an official geforce thing um so after this came out uh nvidia put out a statement saying uh this was all internal testing stuff and none of it's real they just put it there for their internal testing stuff i don't know what do you guys think about I, this i think i don't the, buy it at the very least i would expect god of war to hit pc that just seemed, I, that just makes sense to me um yeah, i like, don't know about the other stuff coming from coming from qa nvidia 100 percent knows about these games early probably earlier than retailers would because they are interfacing with the developers. You know, some of these games are going to have important driver releases as they start to come out. Um, There's going to be GPU testing, et cetera. And so this information, having this information come from NVIDIA is not surprising. It's kind of like that Walmart Canada leak from a couple of years ago. It's like, it's like, yeah, they, they would probably know some of this and you go through this and some of these are like, you know, God of War, Returnal, and Demon Souls for PC. Um, this this is kind of an after the fact in a way, but the GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas remasters. Again, they haven't been officially announced, but the rumor's been heavily confirmed. Um, there's a lot of stuff on here that makes sense. Some things that have already been announced. There's definitely some things on here that are speculative, like Kingdom Hearts 4. That's pretty speculative. So some but there's things on here that are placeholders, you know, like untitled respawn game, untitled, the initiative game, probably perfect dark. And I, I don't quite, I don't quite understand why, look, I'm, I'm a QA tester. If I am putting fake data into a system, it's fake data. Like it's literally like IMG dash equip dash Oh one IMG dash equip dash Oh two. Or like fake one, two, three, fake one, two, four, fake one, two, five. It looks fake. You are very rarely, some some other testers I know when they put in like fake users, they're named like Tom Brady, you know, or Colin Kaepernick. They're named after football stars, et cetera. It's obviously fake. This this doesn't look as fake. And that's not me saying this is 100% real, but this looks like they have a database that they've been putting some, some of their speculations, but also a lot of things that they've been in business talks with into, and they weren't aware it was public. Yeah, And so I don't care what NVIDIA says. I'm looking at this and I'm going, yeah, I would not be surprised if if at least 50%, if not more of these are 100% true. I just want my Dragon's Dogma 2. It's on the list. It's to me. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I completely agree. <clears throat> there's enough on here that um, a lot of it makes sense. I mean, there's a bunch on here, like Mist Remastered that already came out. Um, that's, yeah. Uh, to kind of make this credible um and again it's the same thing with like naming video files you're not going to name it something else for fun like yeah. like maybe one or two or something that's inc- like crazy if you're obsessed with something but you're not going to name several different games uh that could <laughs> come out as a fake yeah. thing and to be clear this is this is the production environment. You know, if they have any sort of QA test, you know, processes and procedures or um, hygiene at all, 
then they are very careful about testing in the production environment. And that means you need to very clearly be using like, like, for example, like uh, at my work, we have customers who are using our software, but then we have fake customers for us to test in. And they are called like QATE support database customer because it's like, this is not a real customer. This is a test customer. So if you're on the production of GeForce Now and you're adding fake data, this is not the data you should be adding. So this is either very likely real or just like God awful dev slash QA procedure. And I'm leaning towards, towards real. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, sweet. Yeah, that's. It's also exciting to see all those titles and like be like eighty percent sure most of these are happening, uh, yeah. which just excites me. Um, did you guys see this thing about the Nintendo FCC filing for new controller? I saw uh, because you listed it. Um, <gasps> I did. I did get a chance to look at it. Um, I think it's just going to be well, maybe not. So let me let me let me tee it up a little bit. So basically, they uh, Nintendo put in a filing with the FCC for a new controller, and the interesting thing is that the model number is HAC-043, and the wireless SNES controller they had released previously for the Nintendo Switch Online stuff was HAC-042. So essentially, the rumor is this is a new Nintendo controller tied to nintendo switch online their uh, they don't call it virtual console for nintendo switch online do they no. it's just like their their retro library so the question is what controller is this because there were all those game boy rumors but is this this can't be a game boy controller that'd be weird. it has to be either some sort of weird gamecube controller these are my opinions some sort of weird gamecube controller i can see n64 controller and they're doing oh, n64 sorry. stuff Skipping N64 and going straight to GameCube, which I don't think they're going to do. Um, or it's a new Joy-Con. Uh, I saw people saying it could be a new Joy-Con uh, skew, like to avoid drifting sort of thing. That's that's sort of what I was thinking it was because um, yeah. there was that. There, I mean, obviously, there's like, like pro a, Joy -Con. I think a bunch of like uh, class action lawsuits or just one class action lawsuit. Um, and I think that it's garnered so much support because I'm pretty sure I'm I'm pretty sure I signed up for it. I can't remember because it was I'm a while ago, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo releases sort of a, a redone Joy-Con that mitigates all the drift stuff that people have been having. I'm I'm lucky. Uh, the only I, I have an original switch like back from, I think, less than two months after it came out and my original controllers that i have do not drift at all i got another set and that one is the one that drifts um so yeah. i've been i think just really lucky i also use the pro controller a lot so i probably don't use the joy con as much as a lot of people do uh and i also don't use my switch that much so that probably I, probably also helps i was so happy that warioware uses uh joy cons everywhere in the marketing and even the little platforms you stand on in game are joy cons but mm. they let you use Pro Controller. I was so Good. happy. Oh, I was like, I, I don't want to... I wanna, love the Pro Controller. I don't want to wrap my hands around a tiny little Joy-Con yeah. uh, to play. And that's why I'm so excited that uh, new Mario Party Superstars lets you use Pro Controller. I'm like, thank you for waking up to this <laughs> epidemic <laughs> and letting me use Pro Controllers. Um, yeah, I thought this was super interesting just to check out. Um, I'm hoping... Uh, again, like most of me leans towards some sort of weird Game Boy peripheral controller since that's the rumor of the next uh, library. But I think an N64 I mean, one would also be if cool. If it was a wireless N64 controller, that would be, oh, that'd be incredible. incredible. Oh, yeah. Especially uh, since most of their controllers you can use with a PC pretty easily. Mm -hmm. So you would basically have a so wireless N64 controller for the PC. That would be incredible. And I yeah. own eight wired ones, so... <laughs> That'd be great. Um, moving on, more Nintendo news. Uh, this is just a quick hit. Uh, they added a software oh, update, God. added Bluetooth audio support. To Can I the just system. real quick, just to tee this up? This is so stupid because they didn't. <laughs> they had Bluetooth, but they did not let you use Bluetooth for your headphones from the very beginning. To the extent that there is an entire submarket of adapters and dongles where you basically pay somebody 20, 30 bucks off Amazon, and you get a little dongle that plugs into the USB C. 
on your switch and it lets you use that for bluetooth to your bluetooth headphones so it was just kind of a given where it's like well they must have done something where it's just never really going to work because of hardware or whatever and then it turns out they just had to patch it they just had to do you know i'm, I'm exaggerating here, but like a two-line code to just be like yeah let's turn on bluetooth audio it was there all along they just took three four years to enable it and it's just like such a simple quality of life thing nintendo i know we should have expected this from you but we still expect better from you God. Bluetooth pairing equals one. That's all they needed to do. Yeah. Just I like just, uh, it's Nintendo. <laughs> I, I, the older I get, the less and less I understand Nintendo's choices. And it's gotten to the point where it used to be Nintendo's just quirky. And now it's, it's getting to the point for me where it's like, are they actively like stopping people from, from wanting to use their stuff longer than that. Like, I just, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Like, it's just so they're already sort of decades behind, you know, on, on internet usage and, and compatibility and connectivity. And th this just makes no sense that it's, yeah. The thing that you guys have wanted is already there. We just have to turn it on. Like that just, yeah. I just don't get it. It feels like they're, it feels like they're, they're, their product management or, or, how their producers, however, what do you want to call that chain is so far behind the ball and so disconnected with the actual users that they never think about these things in the first place. And then they just don't hear the complaints. And then by the time they actually hear the complaint enough to go, yeah, we should add that, that they don't realize the urgency or priority of it. And it just gets added to the backlog or like with the Nintendo switch online stuff, it's just badly designed. Like they, they, they never think of the use case takes them forever to realize there's a use case for it. And then they badly design to meet the use case. And it's just like, you have such incredibly fantastic, well-designed games yeah. and your hardware is bonkers with the switch with how well it works. It's, and then you just have this total disconnect with other quality of life things that have just been lacking for decades. It's, it's insane. And I, I say that as someone who is a big Nintendo fan and went hog wild in the Nintendo store in Japan and bought like, way too many things and it's like i just ugh, they got me <laughs> yeah. yeah um yeah nintendo come on uh moving on we played a little game on saturday called split gate um it is a halo like with portal added into it uh and uh, they have just secured another 100 million dollar investment uh this is their third investment over the past 12 months uh, and, uh, yeah, to keep working on the game, I think this is great for them. I'm glad this, like, sort of, um, I feel like September lull has given them, this is, like, kind of when yeah. Among Us really took off and Fall Guys, uh, so I'm glad that, that they could get hit by this this year. They're the lucky winners, <laughs> and, um, they're doing well. That game's yeah. really fun. I had a great time playing with you, albeit slightly drunk, uh, and screaming, but uh, it was a really fun game. Really took me back way more than I thought it would to the Halo day, Halo Three days, um, and that that Portal stuff I think is just a great strategic addition uh, that yeah. makes that game play real well. I think it's it's just crazy. I'm, I'm reading through this article, and basically they are tying into that venture capital fund that has kind of spurned all the insanity out of Silicon Valley, and um, this hundred million dollar investment puts their total valuation of 1047 games, which nobody has heard of, let alone you still haven't really heard of because it's just Splitgate. 1047 games is now valued at $1.5 billion, which I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, is like 20% of a Bethesda. <laughs> it's like, it's like I, I just, I just like the whole venture capital thing is like out of control. If you just look at like companies like Uber that have never turned a profit, but are valued so obscenely high and i'm just happy to see a studio that is doing great work and making a great game able to go in there and be like hey let's exploit this system but actually have a good product to go with it and yeah. uh like you said i'm happy for him this is great i i will say when i first read that headline i thought it was 1047 different indie games got to share a hundred million dollars <laughs> oh, no. and i was like that's awesome like that's, that's so bad cool. Um, three hundred thousand each. That's great. That's, that's great. Um, which I think would be crazy. Uh, but yeah, I had never heard of Splitgate before I saw this, and it's you said it's an early access, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's free. 
it's early access it's free to play it's okay. basically halo multiplayer with portals and it feels incredible it plays incredible it's great is it, on, is it on steam or does it have a separate downloader or something? i think it's steam, steam ps4 yeah, xbox okay. and it's cross play all right I, I definitely want to try it with yeah. you guys this is the you one uh you were in indiana that's why you weren't playing it with us damn Gosh. indiana the worst state yeah uh, i got raising queens though Ooh. oh um do I care about any of the rest of these? I guess I sort of care about this. Um, <laughs> Twisted Metal series. Sorry. We've talked. It, it's been in rumors. I don't want to say rumors, but they've confirmed it, but it was kind of stalled for a bit. Anthony Mackie from uh, Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier and uh, season two of Altered Carbon is going to be in Twisted Metal. I don't know. I like this actor. I'm curious to see what they do. I feel like Twisted Metal is a crazy IP and there's some room for some crazy stuff to I, happen. I don't guys think I, I don't think anthony mackie's that great of an actor i don't um, like I, I don't get his not. i don't i don't care like i mean twisted metals like sure but it the fact that they added anthony mackie does not, not make me think that it's going to be winning any like acting uh, noms or anything uh, yeah um, I, I anthony mackie is like i agree with you i don't think he's that great of an actor and he's also the type of person type of actor that just plays one character yeah, but for some reason, I just really like that character. You know, he, he he's really good in the Hurt Locker, but I think that was like the first time where he's played that type of character. And then uh, from then on, it's like he's the military kind of like guy who's there for support. Like that, that's yeah. what he does. He's, he's the actor that you would grow up and be like, you see an old person, and you're like, hey, you want to watch this movie? And they're like, no, that person's in it, and I don't like that person. And you're like, why don't you like that person? And they're like, I don't know, I don't like him. That if I hear he's in a movie, I just I do, there's a reason I haven't watched Falcon and Winter Soldier. Just yeah. not a, I, I can't That's, say anything wow. against him. I don't know him personally. Wow. His acting's okay. I wow. just <laughs> don't want to see him in a movie. I don't wow. know why. This um, is my dad. Oh, is. <laughs> shut my, up, my... Ian. <laughs> There's my plenty of white actors I don't want to see in a movie either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very diverse in the actors I, I mean, hate. <laughs> aside from the racism. No, um, my the dad worst. is the same way with, with Jim Carrey, and uh, which I don't know why he doesn't like Jim Carrey, and uh, Alec Baldwin, which I can understand. Wait, Alec why Baldwin, Baldwin is Alec one Baldwin. of the most handsome men in the entire world. It's but like, apparently, it's... He's, apparently he's real shitty to his daughter, so... That's what it's like my happen. my mom hates Alex Trebek, and whenever I'm like, <laughs> "Why do you hate him?" and she goes, "Because he acts like he knows all the answers." <laughs> <And she's> like, <laughs> Not anymore. I'm just like, I was just thinking, everything I said was a great bit in a sitcom where like all the other characters realize the one guy's super racist. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I really hate Anthony Mackie and like Morgan Freeman and Don Cheadle. Yeah, Denzel Washington's overrated. Yeah, just terrible. And... <laughs> You know who's great though? Dennis Quaid, <laughs> Mel Gibson, Daniel Craig. Oh my God, <laughs> Mel Gibson. Daniel Craig oh is my great. Um, He's anyways. my favorite. Mel Gibson, <laughs> Anthony Mackie. Oh, you're you're great. I love you. Email me, baby. Um, final thing Come on, on here show. was former Bungie composer Marty O'Donnell found in contempt of court over use of Destiny assets. I haven't read this article, but is this about him releasing the Destiny music? music? The yeah. yeah, like like there was basically a bad a bad break between him and Bungie, and part of the stipulation was like you have to either delete or turn over all material related to the Destiny score that you helped make, and he's like, okay, I agree to that. And then a couple of years later, he was like, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel where I release all my like behind the scenes work on Destiny stuff, and like, hey, check it out, this is my early track from Destiny, and the court was literally just like. No, you agreed not to do that. <laughs> no, I, know. I have the music of the spheres downloaded. <laughs> so do I. I have it, I have it on it. iTunes. Um, I he, Marty O'Donnell just gives off really big like boomer energy nowadays. Yes, and apparently he's like ultra conservative, very Christian. Which to each, you know, I I I get it. Like you're allowed to have your opinions and everything. Uh, but he just apparently is very difficult to work with and i know a lot of developers who have had dealings with him and they're like nah like we're just yeah. not yeah we're not down with marty he's, he's a fantastic composer but oh yeah my god marty play some ace attorney games because you don't understand the law at all and you just keep messing it up i will say though whatever he contributed to hope for hope for the future with uh What's his face? McCartney. Uh, Paul McCartney is oh that's not, I one of my favorite memories of all time, uh, probably even more than when my kids are born, 
is being able to show uh, Chris from Save Data in the Year of Our Lord 2021, the Hope for the Future music video, because he had no idea any of it <laughs> had existed. What? I I realized I knew it existed, but I don't think I ever watched it or listened <gasps> to it. And in my head, it's a combination of temporary secretary and <laughs> sound bites of of Paul McCartney saying what's a halo you know <laughs> no a halo? The, it is a genuinely i love that song i don't know if it's genuinely good but i genuinely love it and it's just guardians with their ghost projection of paul mccartney <laughs> singing the song <laughs> as oh if they like, go around watching it and Jeez. it's so it's, good it's, it's it sounds like something song. that would happen in Fortnite, like that would be like a yeah, community event that would happen. I just, he's so old and he, <laughs> he, he looks like he's having such a fun time. Uh, go watch it. It's incredible. I absolutely love it. I'm going to listen to it as soon as this podcast is over. Uh, which speaking of <laughs> which as soon now. as this podcast is over, it's over folks. Time to start the music. so We can get the out of here. Um, folks, this was a fun time. Thank you, gentlemen. That uh, hour flew by. Usually it's, uh, excruciating and painful uh, especially when those save data guys are here so this was nice oh. and fun and fast um, Saturday we will be playing possibly some Arma content uh, so I will yeah. keep you all informed of that uh, check our Twitter uh, Subpixel team on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook TikTok if you want to go back there uh, Ian Gibson joined us today you can find him on Twitter at Think Gibson Kyle Bailey was here you can find him on Twitter at Kyle of the Beard you can find me Will Crosby on Twitter at Hunt270 I'm gonna burp but it hasn't come out yet um, what else do we got going on anything else Skateboard Doc Documentary's out. go watch Documentary's Skateboard out. Doc I have to watch it I've been too busy and I haven't watched it yet so I'm gonna go watch it right after their hope for the future uh, subpixelfilms.com will bring you straight to our YouTube channel it should be right there front and center please please check it out tell your friends there were a bunch of great comments on it I was in the subpixel account hearting them so if you would like your comment hearted then <laughs> go there whatever you say I'll heart it uh, as long as there's engagement right um yes jake worked hard on that and i'm so excited it can finally come out um what else not much subscribe we're almost yeah we're almost subscribe. Okay. oh go check out also when you're on the youtube channel check out the fiasco thing we did let us know if you liked it uh i had a fun time editing it uh i was really uh putting it off and then i was gonna half-ass it but i whole-assed it and it was really fun and fun to put together so please go check that out and we will see you all next week.